I want to talk a little bit about one of our featured diseases in Unit 6, and that's AIDS caused by the HIV virus. In 1981, something happened that uh, set the medical and public health field uh, on its ear, and that was the discovery of a syndrome in uh, gay men that caused their immune systems to shut down. Initially called GRIDS and eventually called AIDS for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, by 1984, uh, we knew that it was caused by a new and novel virus, the HIV virus. And this particular disease, emerging uh, as we eventually found out from infected chimpanzees, uh, making it a simian virus in Africa, convinced the uh, medical profession that emerging diseases were a very serious matter that had to be dealt with. Before we could really get a handle on uh, AIDS, uh, many individuals were predicting that this could be the scourge that uh, really uh, uh, became as serious as uh, bubonic plague. And initially it looked that way. Uh, everybody who got infected with this virus died a very high fatality rate and it was transmitted by a set of social behaviors, uh, primarily in the United States anal intercourse, but around the world vaginal intercourse, that uh, was very difficult to uh, stop or have an intervention. Even today, uh, with all that we do, uh, AIDS is a terrible pandemic found in many aspects of the world and difficult to uh, treat and control. The transmission method for this, as I mentioned, uh, really this virus is transmitted in body fluids, primarily semen, can be vaginal fluids, and a few other fluids. And so it requires either intimate contact with an infected individual or the sharing of needles with an infected individual. This virus can also cross the placenta and infect the fetus, so infected mothers, uh, their newborns are at serious risk for this. In developed countries uh, like the United States and Europe and other places, uh, we now, through a very concerted effort over the last 25 years, have developed a number of drugs that can keep this virus uh, in check. And so we now really have two populations related to AIDS. We have a huge population of individuals that we call uh, HIV positive, meaning they have this virus in their system, but they don't have any of the symptoms of AIDS. And then we have uh, people who have AIDS who have the actual manifestation of the symptoms. Now, what are the symptoms of AIDS? Well, they're fairly nondescript as far as the infection itself, but what eventually happens because this virus prefers to infect T cells in the immune system as a person loses their capacity during the course of the infection to fight off other infections. So they get things like uh, uh, fungal pneumonia or protozoal pneumonia or unusual cancers like Kaposi's sarcoma. And it's these diseases, these opportunistic infections that eventually kill them. Right now, probably the greatest killer worldwide of people who have AIDS is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is adapted to manifest itself very markedly in people whose immune systems are compromised. When you get infected with uh, the HIV, this virus, uh, you'll have an acute phase initially that's very hard. The symptoms are, are fairly hard to discern. And then the virus becomes latent. That's one of the insidious aspects of this virus. The virus DNA can integrate into the DNA of the nucleus of your own cells and hide out there dormant for months to years. This is the case with people who are HIV positive. They carry the virus, but because of the drugs they take, often every day, it suppresses the ability of the virus to escape out of the nucleus of the cell and cause an active infection. There have been many attempts to remove these antiviral drugs and see if the virus has been permanently repressed, but this has not been the case so far. Once the virus begins to uh, replicate in the body, then you begin to get the symptoms of AIDS. So people who are HIV positive require constant treatment throughout their life in order to suppress this virus and keep it from replicating. Without this uh, antiviral therapy, uh, AIDS would still be the pandemic it was in the 1980s when it was growing exponentially almost every six months. As I mentioned, we know the origin of this disease uh, came as a monkey virus uh, that uh, 
hunters, uh, bushmeat hunters, came in contact with these infected chimps and the virus because of the, of the fact that it has an RNA genome instead of a DNA genome, it, replica or it mutates a hundred times more readily than most viruses, so it rapidly mutated and developed into the virus that we have now that infects humans almost exclusively. Well, uh, HIV, it's going to be around for a long time. Uh, we have not had any success starting in uh, the early 1980s or the, uh, until now uh, developing a vaccine. That would be the hope is eventually to make an HIV vaccine that we can give to people and uh, eliminate uh, this threat. Since the discovery of HIV in 1984, uh, it's been so long now that we just take it for granted that it's one of the uh, health hazards that uh, we have to deal with.